as you read through Jane Austen's novel, Persuasion, you'll see the word persuasion show up numerous times in very different contexts. So it's, it's worthwhile to pay attention to some of the permutations of this word. It, it doesn't always mean the same thing. Uh, in, in other words, it's, it's, it's not a straightforward um, concept in the novel. It, it ultimately is very complicated and, and in places ambiguous. So I, I just like to think about that word a little bit. Uh, I can't go through and analyze all the different appearances in, in the novel of the word, well over 30. But I will point out just a couple, and, and this will hopefully get you thinking about persuasion in a subtle fashion. So first of all, it's, it's, it's worth noting that persuasion, first and foremost, is a, it, it is the art of rhetoric. The art of rhetoric is designed to persuade people to do things, to bring people over to a particular belief or argument or idea. There are at least two ways, though, to think about rhetorical persuasion. The first is I can say, well, I'm going to persuade you to do um, what I think you should because what I think you should do is rational. Um, the idea that I am here proposing is, in my mind, a, a good idea, and I have good reasons for adhering to this idea, and I will now lay out these very good reasons for adhering to this idea. And when you hear me, you will be convinced um, of the validity of my idea. In other words, we can see persuasion as a, as a kind of gentle uh, effort to try to teach others of the validity of, one idea, of one's ideas, again, um, through the use of reason, through the use of logic. But then there's another kind of persuasion, which is quite violent, uh, rhetorically violent, I mean, and that is that occurs when an orator is simply trying to convince you that he is right, regardless of rationality. Uh, we see this in politics, of course, all the time, where it's not so much a matter of the validity of argument, it's more a matter of, 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 the, of the power of the personality uh, to, to make you think that that person is right. So persuasion can be a kind of gentle, rational process of enlightening someone um, and to, uh, concerning the validity of an idea, uh, but also it can be an act of coercion. And in an act of coercion, uh, persuasion might not use reason or logic. It could use deception, um, subterfuge, and so on. So I just it's important to keep these two uh, extreme these oppositions, um, these um, opposing definitions of persuasion in mind as we think about the novel. Now, obviously the, 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 the most um, overt um, example of persuasion is the one where Lady Russell uh, persuades the very young Anne Elliot not to marry Captain Wentworth. And Anne herself uh, is, regrets that to, to a large extent. Um, eight years down the road when Captain Wentworth shows up again and she's not been very happy and thinks about how happy she might have been. But it's not that simple. Um, she was persuaded at 19 not to marry Wentworth. One could say that on the one hand, she was persuaded against her will. She loved Captain Wentworth. She had a faith that she and Captain Wentworth would be happy. Um, but she saw in Lady Russell a, an authority who brought forth a, a good set of reasons, reasons on the side of prudence. Um, so it, it was kind of a, we might say, a kind of blending of, of coercion. Lady Russell thought Captain um, Wentworth was simply beneath Anne. Um, but also Lady Russell did invoke um, conventions that were taken seriously in Anne's time. So there is in the novel, let's call it external persuasion, where someone persuade someone else to do something that they don't necessarily want to do. And we see that show up over and over and over again. And Lady Russell's persuasion of Anne would be an example of that. But persuasion can also be an internal process. So even though Anne at the, at the age of 19 was, was persuaded by Lady Russell, she has since persuaded herself that she should have married him. So we, we sometimes see characters, usually Anne, um, not work the art of persuasion on other people, 
but work through our persuasion on our own psyche. Um, so persuasion can, can also work on the inside where a person tries to convince him or herself um, of the validity of a decision. Well, persuasion can also be, let's call it a, an, an impulse, um, an internal impulse. If, if Lady Russell reasons her way into getting Anne not to marry Captain Wentworth, if, if Anne reasons her way into saying she should have married Captain Wentworth, there's another moment where um, Anne says Captain Wentworth left the concert of Lady Dalrymple very quickly because there, there was a persuasion that led him to do that. He'd seen Mr. Elliot close to Anne. Of course, he was concluding that, that she was going to marry Mr. Elliot. So this sudden impulse within Captain Wentworth, it's, it's almost like a uh, he was spurred. He was, he was um, overcome almost with a kind of extreme emotion that persuaded him he must leave. So persuasion is not necessarily a, a rational um, concept in, in persuasion. It, it, it can sometimes be a, a very quick, abrupt, overwhelming motivation to do something. Um, but ultimately, in the, in the novel, we've, we've seen three different kinds of persuasion. Um, ultimately, the, the novel's not very clear about um, the value of persuasion at all. Uh, for instance, um, we know that Captain Wentworth, eight years after being rejected by Anne, is spending time with Louisa Musgrove, and he really loves that she says, I would never be persuaded by anybody. Um, no matter what I want to do, no matter what anyone says, I'm going to do it. And Captain Wentworth goes, oh, that's fantastic. I honor you for that. Um, but then, of course, what does her willfulness get her? Um, when he tells her not to jump from the steps um, in Lyme, she does anyway. And that leads to, of course, the terrible accident that, that almost kills her. So not being persuadable um, is just as problematic as being overly persuadable. So the, the novel really forces us to think about, is there a place in the middle um, between being utterly willful, no one can persuade me, and being utterly let's say, lacking fortitude and being persuaded to do anything. Well, the, one of the final scenes between Anne and Wentworth doesn't really help us out very much. Um, she says to him, you know, um, if I was wrong to yield per, to persuasion eight years ago, um, at least the persuasion, pers persuasion was on the side of safety and not risk. So, so even at the end of the novel, there's not a sense that she knows if she was right to be persuaded or wrong to be persuaded. Here she says, I was wrong to yield to persuasion. However, the persuasion was valid in a way. Um, so maybe I was right to yield to the persuasion. So what we see in the word um, in the novel through its various permutations um, and through the ways that its usefulness and lack of usefulness um, is explored is this, that we realize that in persuasion, um, persuasion is not so much a matter of rhetoric, though it is. It's ultimately a way of, of, of measuring a, a, a character's sensitivity to the complexities of the world. Someone like Louisa is not sensitive to the complexities of the world. I will do this all the time. She's an absolutist. And certainly characters like Sir Walter are not sensitive to the complexities of the world. But someone like Anne, she's constantly thinking and, and measuring and meditating and wondering and questioning and criticizing. In other words, she, she, she uses persuasion, let's say, um, as a way to sort of help her explore um, what are the right things to do? What are the wrong things to do? What should I persuade myself to do? This or that? What should others persuade me to do? This or that? So for Anne, persuasion is almost an epistemological um, framework. Um, and her sensitivity to the complexities of the world really signals her, her worth as, as a main character in a novel where so many other characters are either so easily persuaded by others or refuse to be persuaded by others. And there are obviously problems with either extreme.